All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, in today's news roundup video, we are darting all around the place with a variety of topics surrounding Batman news and multiple stories. That's going to get pretty interesting. Getting into what could possibly also be some exciting DC news that, that could be coming our way with what Warner Brothers Discovery has planned. And then some DCU updates, also getting into the past of DC with a couple of interesting stories. Then The Boys, some Deadpool 3. And and probably some more chucked in there. And before we begin, guys, would really appreciate a like on this video. It really does just, you know, let YouTube know, hey, maybe we're going to recommend this channel some more, some new people out there. And of course, consider subscribing. If you haven't done so already, maybe double check. You, you might think you are, but you might not be. But to begin with here, guys, um, I don't want to get people's hopes up. But there is something very, very interesting happening in just under a couple of weeks' time. So here you can see here from this Warner Brothers Discovery ad sales account on Twitter saying, Get ready, two weeks until Warner Brothers Discovery's upfront event. Be sure to follow along on May 15th for live updates and the latest news from our brands. Now, the reason why this is interesting is because of what could be revealed during these upfronts. Now, again, I don't really want to get people overhyped, but there is a prediction or two that we can put out there because during the Warner Brothers upfronts on May 15th that they're hosting at the theater at Madison Square Garden, well, they're of course going to be showing off its portfolio of streaming among digital platforms, including, you know, several of their things, but most importantly here, Max. Now, why is Max important? Well, that is because that is the home platform of DC content that we're going to be looking forward to in the future as in DCU, as well as other Elseworlds projects like the Penguin. So for DCU, uh, could we be getting a brief, a brief little tidbit teaser, maybe, just maybe, of Creature Commandos? I don't know. That's one of the biggest things that I see people speculating about. I think that's where I want to emphasize the don't get your hopes up aspect because Creech Commando's production is going really, really, really well, according to James Gunn. But animation does take a very long time. So I think it's more likely we're going to see something from Creech Commando's at Comic-Con. I'm sure like the animation it has still got a long ways to go, given that it's not coming out until fall this year. But at the same time, maybe they could have cooked something up to tease Maybe, just maybe, but my safe bet would be Comic-Con. Another reason why I'm quite intrigued about this is because I haven't really been able to get out of my head what James Gunn said over on Threads a while ago. Um, so long story short here, I'm going to attempt that because usually it's a long story long. Oh god, I've already started. On the Warner Brothers Discovery quarterly earnings call a little while back, you may remember David Zaslav told the investors, if you will, the, the people on the call, like, ah, oh, you know, James Gunn and PSF ran since, you know, it's quite a thing to bring up on the quarterly earnings call because, you know, the DCU is a big thing uh, to show off to people saying, hey, you know, invest in us, you know, Warner Brothers has still got it, the future's bright, hopefully, but he said that um, Gunn and Safran will be taking you through the full spectrum of what they have planned in the next decade of DC, so the 8-10 to year plan. And I thought, not much of that, right? Because I was like, well, this isn't going to be to us, the public, you know, this is a quarterly earnings call, so it's probably going to be for people behind closed doors to, you know, show the promise of what Warner Brothers Discovery has planned for the future. But then Gunn got asked on social media, on threads specifically here, which is where he seems to have migrated uh, over time, from this user saying, as Dave David Zaslav said, you and Peter will announce more projects within a few months. So will you announce it at San Diego Comic Con or via live video? And he replied to this. So this instantly changed things for me because again, I went from thinking, okay, maybe we're not going to hear too much more about the DCU considering how early it is. Granted, there's tons of projects still yet to be announced. You know, we, we still haven't heard a whole bunch about the first several, the first 10, 11, 12, 13 actually. And uh, maybe it's just going to be again for the people who are investing in Warner Brothers. But the fact that he decided to reply to this, basically quoting what Zaslav said. So it's, it's about about Zaslav saying that he would be showing the full spectrum of DC in the next few months and Gunn's reply was those are our only two choices implying to me that oh he's acknowledging that he will be doing something in the next several months but it won't necessarily be a San Diego Comic Con or via a live video it could be something else now 
ever since then, nobody's really figured out what that something else could be. I mean, sure, people have chucked out the idea of what I would love, but I don't think there's really enough material there. Maybe even just a mini DC fandom, but again, I don't know if we're going to get that back. Again, there's not really enough to work with at this point in time. Um, but the other choices, as what Gunn is saying, those are only two choices. Well, what about the Warner Brothers Discovery upfronts? Maybe, I don't know, it, it does seem kind of likely in a sense of it being a setting where that would be perfect, right? You know, it's a, it's an upfront, um, it's, I believe it's streamed virtually to press and, and people like that, so if you want Peter Safran and James Gunn to be like, hey, we're not going to give you everything, but we might give you a little bit of uh, the spectrum of what we're about to offer with DC. So here's a little, hey, look at what we're working on with Creature Commandos. Hey, we've got Elseworlds going on over here with uh, the, the Bridge the Gap series to the Batman 2 with that of the Penguin. And then there's this, and then there's that. And do you know what I mean? But I don't think they're going to go balls to the wall with it because what really do they have to show with other projects that haven't even started filming yet? I mean, technically the next one to really gear up is Supergirl. So do you see what I mean? Without rambling about this one for too much longer, um, we could get something at the Warner Brothers upfronts. I totally forgot to mention we're probably going to get a Superman and Lois season 4 teaser of some kind. And maybe I'm forgetting something. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. But either way. Let me know what you're hoping for. Up next, we need to, this is, I guess, related to the DCU, but we're diving into a variety of Batman stories now. Some super intriguing, but starting off with the DCU here, someone else has tossed their hat in the ring for the, the idea of them playing DCU Batman. This time, we have Black Panther and the Fall Guy star, Winston Duke, wants to campaign to be the DCU's next Batman. He said, listen man, can you start that campaign? Uh, he laughs, uh, I would say I challenge you to get on all of these socials and push it for me. Uh, get your community. I would love to. I would love to do that as Batman. I'd love any opportunity to explore new characters, to change narratives around some of these entrenched ideas of how these characters are supposed to look, sound, and perform, I'm all for it. You know, what I want to say, to be honest, straight away is he has already played an excellent, excellent Batman in something which I don't think gets enough credit. And to be honest, I wish, <laughs> along with many things recently that I did a review for, and that is the um, Batman Unbur Unburied podcasty kind of audio drama that you can find over on Spotify. So please, please go check that out if you haven't already. It is just that good. I really do mean it. Give it a listen. I've seen a lot of other people really want him for the role of, you know, a DCU role such as um, John Stewart. Uh, it seems from what I'm gathering these days that Brandon Sklenar is the absolute top fan cast for people as the DCU Batman. And what's interesting recently, as I've pointed out with Job Hutz's artwork, honestly, go check him out. His, his concepts for the DCU are fantastic, is that Brandon Sklenar has actually reposted it over on Instagram. So I wouldn't say he's put his hat in the ring as much as some of these other actors have, like Alan Richardson actually talking about it, Winston Duke now talking about it, even if jestingly a little bit. But there's a little subtle nod from Brandon Sklenar there. I guess in the same way that you could say that David Corrin was asked for a few years about him playing Superman, and it still happened. So you never know. It's kind of one of those weird vibes where you can actually imagine um, in a couple of years, give or take, um, maybe that could happen for Brandon as well. Because, but I guess that depends if you think Batman in the DCU is going to be more of an up-and-coming kind of breakout role for said actor, and I suppose that would fit with Brandon Sklenar, uh, as it did, for example, with David Corrin Sweat. But usually with Batman, they are quite larger actors in Hollywood who get that role, whereas Superman has often been, here we have David Corrin Sweat, you know, previously Henry Cavill, same thing with Brandon Ralph, so you get my point. But up next, I absolutely have to talk about the new Batman Arkham game in VR. Yes, I said VR. So despite hearing that, and I know a lot of people when they first saw this, they were like, oh, but the, the thing is, I will say that the trailer is pretty cool. Like, let's talk about this for a second. So there is a new Batman Arkham game called Batman Arkham Shadow uh, coming to MetaQuest VR. Now, the thing that sucks about this for me is that I actually got an Oculus Quest, which I guess is now a MetaQuest several years ago 
but it's not the Quest 3. I believe this is exclusive. This game is literally exclusive to Meta Quest 3. And I, I guess people's instant reactions to this obviously is, oh my god, a new Batman Arkham game, but then they're instantly deflated because of the whole VR aspect to it. It's a mixed bag because VR is really cool. I do admit that I think for most people it's more of a novelty, novelty thing, but I will say after having experience in VR myself with my Quest, and it's probably obviously only got better since I've used my, you know, original Quest compared to the Meta Quest 3. Back then playing some of those Star Wars games, like, you know, going to Vader's castle and Mustafar and stuff, that was really, really cool. So I imagine a really immersive Batman, um, Arkham game like this could be pretty sweet. It's just, you know, not everyone is willing to spend up to five, six, seven plus hundred dollars, give or take, on on a on a VR headset. But the trailer, let's talk a bit about the details of it. It seems to be set between Arkham Origins and Arkham Asylum. Now, how do we know that? Well, I would say that the Batman armor here is quite reminiscent of that time. It's not exactly the same as Arkham Origins, but it seems like a bit of a transition-y uh, phase of the armor. Now, interestingly, Roger Craig Smith, who voiced Batman in Arkham Origins, I believe actually did repost this on his Twitter and then seemingly decided to um, undo his retweet because maybe that gave away that he could be involved in the project. So maybe that's a bit more further evidence that is his Arkham Origins version of Batman voicing it. Now, it seems to be that Ratcatcher could very well be the main villain of uh, this VR experience, which, you know, I, I think is pretty cool in a VR sense because so imagine being hoarded by rats in virtual reality in the way that this trailer kind of really gets across. I think that would be pretty kind of terrifying, especially if VR is only improved. I would love to get this, by the way, at another quest and do it on the stream. Who knows what the future holds? If you want to see me freaking fling batarangs and fight rats as post Arkham Origins Batman, then... Maybe I'll just do that, but that would cost a pretty penny, I suppose. The trailer's full of quite a few Easter eggs. Instantly, you can see that there's a badge uh, ID from Harleen Quinzel there. There's a Vote Dent badge. Obviously, there's a rat that you're following throughout the trailer, and it runs through uh, a mask there, uh, maybe a rat catcher mask, and there seems to be some gloves that could make up the outfit. So I think, you know, with that combined with the, uh, the horde of rats that you have in the trailer, it seems that Rat Catcher does is most likely the main villain that you're going to experience. The full trailer, I believe, is coming uh, June 7th, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people are excited about it. All kinds of articles. One's, one headline from Forbes here saying, a new Arkham game is coming, but you may not like it. So either way, w will you be exploring this, exploring the streets of Gotham as Batman in virtual reality and maybe being surrounded by rats in Batman Arkham Shadow? Let me know down in the comments below. And very, very quick update here to the DC Titans fans. Yes, I'm talking about Max's Titans. It seems that after years and years, we have some pop vinyls releasing. So shout out to Funkaholic here, this Instagram page for, for getting them. It's, it's also interesting that you have Beast Boy with the season one jacket look there. And then you have Raven, who seems to be a bit more from the later seasons. Either way, I, I think these these pop figures look pretty damn clean, like with especially Nightwing there. And, and Beast Boy looks pretty good. I mean, I would have liked to have seen his new suit, but maybe... I guess you could say the jacket being used for so long was a bit more iconic to the look on DC Titans. But will you guys be getting these? Just wanted to chuck them up there because I have no idea how many people are aware that Funko is actually releasing Titans pop figures. Up next, guys, we have some DCU Superman news here. Kind of, but not kind of, but kind of, maybe. And what I mean by that is initially yesterday, there was some news, if you want to say, that piqued people's interest with this person here, Tori Pratt, uh, who is a stunt motion capture actor, being added as crypto to Superman, but on IMDb. Now, I know I am the first person to say, guys, how many times do I need to tell you? Do not listen to IMDb. I mean, the thing about IMDb, which makes it such a mixed bag of which I think people get so carried away with, is that you do genuinely have talents, managers, or agencies adding people to the IMDb pages for these projects and movies and TV shows. They literally add them because they want the crew on there, they want their credits on there, their actors on there, to that of mocap people. You, you get what I'm saying, right? So it, it can be legitimate, but you can also edit it and add anyone. Now, the thing about this is that 
People reached out, as DC Film News says here, we reached out to Tori Pratt to confirm her involvement in Superman as the mocap performer for Crypto. She confirmed the IMDB listing was a mistake. Now, for one here, I'm going to play devil's advocate with IMDB because I agree with what DCU updates are saying here, saying the thing is, what a weird addition to the IMDB page. Someone, like, someone had to take the time and add it, and it's so specific. And I agree with that. Like, out of all the things that you could add to IMDB, you know, normally people add, you know, I don't know, like, stupid things like, oh my god, you know, Joaquin Phoenix or Lady Gaga is in the Batman 2 cast list. Boba, what do you think of this? And it's like, guys, what are you telling me that Barry Keown is just going to morph to Joaquin Phoenix? It's stuff like that that's incredibly transparently, like, not true. But when, you know, there's an actual stunt mocap person... Tori Pratt here, and she's been specifically added for crypto, it makes you kind of think, just slightly, what if, you know, somebody higher up who ha who manages her and whatnot thought they that it wasn't like a huge deal, and they obviously knew that she was mocapping and performing as crypto um, on the movie, and they just added it, without really thinking about what that could mean. And also, yes, even though she denied or said that it was a mistake, well, let me put it this way. After being approached about it, it's not like she would confirm it. Do you know what I mean? Like, would she be like, oh yeah, I'm playing crypto. Like, she would want to kind of save face here and be like, oh no, no, it was a mistake, even if she was. Now, that doesn't still make it true. I'm very aware of that. Very aware of it. But... I just still wanted to bring that up um, and say bookmark it because crypto has always been a possibility. He's been subtly teased or, you know, people have looked into what James Gunn has said before with regards to, oh, maybe we could get a bit of all-star superman S kind of crypto in there and whatnot. Who knows? Now, getting into some more reachy territory of the DCU, Gunn um, recently uploaded a picture of a beautiful sideshow, I believe sideshow collectible statue of Superman and Lois here. Now... He took a very specific, but this is what people are going on. He took a very specific photo in front of the mirror here. And some people are like, well, this could either just be a picture of Superman and Lois, you know, featuring the statue, which it is, you know, and he maybe wants to show that off. But maybe he took this specific angle to deliberately show what's on the cape there. Don't you think the usage of a mirror was a bit too deliberate? Maybe he's trying to tell us that there is a symbol on the red cape of the new suit. I will have to say here, you know, and you know me, guys, I like to entertain stuff like this, that it probably is just a photo attached with all the other photos that he's uploaded, and there is no subliminal kind of teasing there. It is, you know, entertaining hearing that, to be honest, um, because I do think this is just a photo. But you never know. What if he is just like, hey, you know, I secretly put this in front of the mirror so you could see the symbol. But no, I mean, I, I really don't think there's anything more to it other than just him showing off that amazing statue that I would love on my shelves. But my God, that would probably cost a lot of money. Over on threads as well, we have this user saying, how is filming going? Has it been difficult filming Superman and Peacemaker at the same time? And Gunn says, I am only filming a handful of days of Peacemaker before I'm done uh, shooting Superman. And then this other user says, with so many projects ahead, do future DCU plans get put on the back burner while you're shooting or are they constantly being developed? And I feel like this answer is fairly obvious, but we've had this user who Gunn always replies to, um, and it's interesting here because they said a bunch of stuff is still being written even when James is shooting. And I find that answer kind of obvious anyway because it's like just because Gunn's shooting Superman and doing this with Peacemaker over here and editing Superman over there. He's got a whole architectural team who are working on like, you know, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, probably trying to write other projects like Waller and, and everything else. Like that stuff is actively happening in the background no matter what. Okay, so now diving into a little bit of DC history yet news here. Here we have from DC Film News saying, Shogun star uh, Anna Swai reveals that she was banned from auditioning for the part of Katana uh, in David A's Suicide Squad by the manager of J-pop group. Uh, is that fakey? Fake? I, I don't know. I, I go to my manager and he's like, you can't audition. Long story short, in this Hollywood Reporter article, she was in that group. They told her she can't audition. She said it felt like they were really trying to tie me down. And because of my contract, I couldn't leave until the time that I actually left, which was in 2018. And that role instead went to uh, Karen Fukuhara, of course, um, in The Boys. Um, and and she's, she's absolutely fantastic. And she said that she did an amazing job anyway. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to bring this up is that it is kind of 
weird to think that she maybe, you know, could have auditioned for that and got that role, but I'm kind of glad that she didn't because I would really, really love Anna Sawai in the DCU. Now, we have this user here on Threads asking you guys saying, have you seen Shogun? Because Anna is awesome in it and she could be great in DC. And Gunn says, yeah, she's fantastic. Now, this doesn't mean anything necessarily it is just him acknowledging yeah i've seen shogun and yeah she's fantastic yeah maybe she would be great in dc but i do feel like she is the exact kind of i guess if the right word would be caliber of actor that the dc you could be hunting for in the future because if you look at like the cast of superman right again as we've gone over it's not like there's crazy a-listers in there quite a few of them maybe very much so breakout roles for you know david corin sweat and and several other characters obviously nicholas holt is quite established i would say rachel brosnahan has been as well but in future projects you know i wonder if it's going to be a similar casting pool and um you know Anna Sawai, who plays uh, Marika Sama in Shogun, I loved Shogun, really, really enjoyed it. And she was so good in that. And honestly, watch Shogun if you haven't already. It, it, it's that good. It, it's a bit of a slow burn, but trust me, really, 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 really good. And I'm just thinking, who could she be in DC? I don't know, but I want her in there. That's, that's all I know. And so was Cosmo Jarvis, who played uh, Blackthorn as well. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like him in the DCU as well. But for which character? That That is a good question. Um... But yeah, a lot of a lot of talent that I can really see being involved. So again, let me know your thoughts on all of that. Now, walking down uh, the the line of DC history even more, I have another article that I want to bring to your guys' attention, and this is about that of the previous Lantern series, if you guys remember. That was coming from Greg Berlanti. Like, I remember covering and doing a whole Everything We Know So Far video about it. Like, and then, obviously, everything changed. Is the more DC... Like, it, things have changed a lot in DC. But from comicbook.com here, we have Finn Whitrock, star of the cancelled Green Lantern series, comments on Guy Gardner role. And if you guys remember, that was meant to be peppered with quite a lot of Lanterns. I think it was focusing mainly on Finn Whitrock's Guy Gardner. I think Alan and Scott was going to be in it. You know, his comments kind of made me sad a bit because I was really happy with these castings, to be honest. And he says here, um, you know, I had like 20 Green Lantern comics sitting in my closet. I was starting to read the comics. My five-year-old son would find the comics of me like, Dad, what's this? And I was like, research from a project that never was. But yeah, it gave me a great education into Green Lantern already. And, and now I'm kind of hooked onto the story. So it was definitely, I won't say it didn't sting to find out the news that it wasn't happening. Um, but I think it was nice because I got to realize what I would need to do to prepare for a role like that. So hopefully some other comic book role will, you know, the one that's supposed to be, will come my way. And then at least like have some kind of heads up about how to enter that world. It's just kind of crazy how things have developed. Again, another actor who I would be delighted to see uh, join the DCU. I know I keep saying that, but he is, I've seen him in many things and he's, he's really talented and easily, easily could see him in the future of James Gunn's DC Universe. Now, last couple of stories of today's video that I want to bring to your attention is, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of new posters for The Boys Season 4. Do not forget that it premieres on June 13th. Uh, and it's just, you know, even though we've covered the trailer here on the channel, go check it out. It just kind of reminded me, like, oh yeah, we're ramping up to The Boys. Slowly but surely. I know we're in May, but, you know, hopefully sooner or later we're going to get another peek at the season beyond these posters. But it's just really showing you with Billy Butcher here and the Homelander poster. Uh, just don't forget how last season ended. Um, and things are going to get very chaotic with the way that the public is kind of perceiving Homelander, the surprise reaction that that certain crowd had to him, heat visioning, uh, you know, that Starlight supporter. Um, but at the same time, Billy Butcher is on borrowed time, and I've been very intrigued as to how that's going to unfold um, with, obviously, the temp V usage. And I see a lot of people are bringing up how much longer is the boys going to go on for with regards to Homelander. Is this finally going to be the season when he's maybe put in the ground? You know, Billy's on borrowed time, so, like, what, are they really going to like reverse the effects of what happened last season or is he actually going to go out and kamikaze if you will given that he only has so much time left this could be an explosive season for the boys and you know the, the stories that have culminated up until maybe maybe 
these final events. You know, but I don't think it's been advertised as like any kind of final, final, final moment for these characters. So we're gonna have to wait and see. But you know, seeing these posters again brought up the hype for me and my anticipation for the upcoming season. I will be breaking it down on the channel just like last year. And then we have some new looks at Deadpool and Wolverine from Empire Magazine. I have to say, I love that cover. Um, I, I just think one thing that everyone is taking away from this on top of the new images is that it just looks so cool. You know, Deadpool looks awesome, but Wolverine here, Hugh Jackman just looks so freaking awesome in these new snapshots that we got. We've also got Hugh Jackman in that amazing Wolverine pose. Probably a pose we've seen a thousand times before, but here in the suit, you know, with him crouched like that and getting ready to fling forward. It's just eye candy. It, it, it really is. And, and some of the snippets from Empire Magazine here um, it is great. You know, you have Ryan Reynolds here talk at length about how it feels like the most Deadpool movie in the history of Deadpool. And it goes on to describe some interesting things about the plot here subtly. Because while the film sees Wade Wilson trying to live a quiet and domestic life, he's soon pulled into the TVA by agents working for Matthew McFadden's boss, Mr. Paradox. There, according to Marvel boss Kevin Feige, Wade is shown the sacred timeline, the most glorious place in the world, with all its heroic allure. Deadpool is very intrigued by that, Feige tells Empire, but Paradox's plan might not be what Wade expects. He learns soon thereafter that it's not quite as simple as an offer he thought it was, uh, adds Feige, and the stakes are universe-sized. And speaking of Feige, he actually spoke to Empire Magazine about Hugh Jackman's return as Wolverine, and I found this super interesting because they say, you know, it was Feige who was the most nervous about Jackman's return to the role, having previously warned the actor to not renege uh, on the gut-wrenching finale of Logan. I said, let me give you a piece of advice, Hugh. Don't come back, Feige recalls. You had the greatest ending in history with Logan. That's not something we should undo. But it seems that this won't be the exact same Logan we've met in previous X-Men movies. Correct, says Feige. And after a long drive, Jackman decided that another take on the character was exactly what he hankered for. I was about an hour into the drive, he remembers, and that question came into my head. What do I want to do? And as soon as I asked the question, I wanted to do... Deadpool and Wolverine. I just knew it. I drove for another hour, couldn't stop thinking about it, and I got out the car, called Ryan, and, and said, Ryan, if you have me, I'm in. So that is super intriguing because Feige was so, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, don't come back, man. That was a great ending. This was quite a, you know, discourse happening at the time as well. Should Hugh Jackman, I mean, like, we're happy in a way, but uh, should he have done that? Because Logan was a really good send off for the character. But of course, there's another tidbit, I guess you could say, in how it's not the same Wolverine from that of Logan. Now, the reason why I point that out is because there was the theory that, you know, when we have uh, Deadpool trying to recruit Logan, he could have gone to the forest or even, you know, according to the trailer when he's in the bar and he says, hi, Peanut, it could have been like an earlier version of that Logan. Logan, which I guess, you know, could be true on a technicality despite what Feige says here because it, it could still be correct because it's not the version of Logan from, you know, uh, when he encounters X-23. Maybe a bit earlier than that because he's still struggling to get the claws out. But let me know any theories with regards to that because technically both Wolverines and Logan and now in this new Deadpool Logan let their worlds down. I mean, we know what happened in the Westchester incident with Charles and maybe, you know, Logan felt quite guilty about that. So did something similar happen here? Um, but it's great just to get some even just subtle updates, even with Feige saying, don't do this, Hugh. And Hugh came back and now it's probably going to make Feige a lot of money. Just wanted to sprinkle that in there. It's been a very long news roundup, so I'm going to end this one here. If you enjoyed it, of course, uh, let me know by leaving a like on it. Let me know your thoughts about each and every story, especially if you stay tuned up until this point and you watch the whole freaking video. You're amazing. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, double check because you might think you are, but you might not be. And if you're definitely not, consider subscribing uh, because, I mean, you made it this far, so, so, so you may as well. But I'm going to love you and leave you now, ladies and gentlemen. Again, and thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see all of you people in the next video. Goodbye.